Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a big Sephora and Ulta haul. Your girl's done some shopping. I have a lot of new goodies that I haven't gotten to show you guys. I've been wanting to film this, but I just kind of got away from it. I don't know, I was doing tutorials and other things. So if you're new here, I'd love for you to subscribe and stay a while. Thank you guys for all the love that you give me on a daily basis. I just want to say I appreciate you and I love you. And if you want to see what I've been spending my moolah on, then please keep watching. Really quickly, I want to tell you that I basically took a bath in this uh, butter highlighter from Physicians Formula. If you can see on my collarbones and all over my face, this is the pink one and it is amazing. I'm obsessed, actually obsessed. They are stunning. I am absolutely in love and I want to tell you super quickly because I know I will forget. On my lips, I have Dose of Colors Let's Cuddle, first time I've ever worn this shade, but I really like it. And then I topped it off with this, which I've been loving, and this is the Kim K Bronze uh, Gloss. I did buy a few of the glosses, and I feel like a lot of them are sheer, but this one really stands out to me. So this is my lip combo, and the pink is Physician's Formula. So I will link them in the down bar, but I just wanted to say that because I am so terrible at it because I can't remember, so if this video goes up in a week, I'm like, ooh, what concoction did I wear that day? Like, who knows? I literally just sit here and start slapping shit on. But today, I'm really loving these products. Also, I want to say before we get started, do not forget to use Ebates. I'm not going to go through the whole spiel, but I love Ebates. And I believe I got 6% cash back from Sephora and I think 4 from Ulta. So I'll have my link in the down bar. But if you're not using Ebates, you need to get on it. All right, first thing I picked up from Sephora is this new Watermelon Glow Pink Juice Moisturizer from Glow Recipe. First of all, this packaging is absolutely stunning. They have a watermelon sleeping mask, which I do have. And I think it's okay. It's nothing crazy. But... This just looked like it was like a gel formula. It was gonna smell really nice, great for summer, and I really just got sucked in by the packaging. So this was a pretty penny, but it had amazing reviews, and I used it today. I've used it multiple times now, and I do enjoy it. Do I think that my mind is blown and it's something that I've never tried before? No, but I think it's nice in the sense that it feels good on the skin, it doesn't irritate my skin, and doesn't break me out. So I'm really enjoying this. It's a newer release from this company, and I just think their branding is just beautiful. It kind of sucks you in. This next product is really similar to the other one. Um, this is called the Beauty Filter Cream Glow. First of all, this packaging is gorgeous. I feel like this should be in a bougie hotel bathroom with like marble from like ceiling to floor. It's just stunning. This is from, uh, I think it's Sun and Park. Yes, yeah, so they have like a micellar water and then they have this cream, but this is a newer release. I really enjoy this. When you look at it, it looks like it is white, but when you blend it out on your skin, it has like almost this iridescent pink, almost like a pink strobe cream from MAC. I'm gonna see if I can kind of show you. So when you get it out, it's like white and you're thinking, oh, it's just like a moisturizer. But when you blend it into the skin, first of all, it just feels amazing, but it gives you this like light pink glow. I don't know how to describe it and I don't even know if it's being picked up on camera, but it's just stunning. It really does give you a glow. And to me, I use it, I mean, I guess you could use it as a primer, but I use this and then a primer kind of in my T-zone area for my pores, which is what I also do with the glow recipe. So it just gives this like, almost just like iridescent pink, but it's not glittery. It's just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Again, packaging sucked me in, but the reviews kind of backed it up and I do agree it's really, really nice. I'm not gonna be returning it because I'm really enjoying it. Another skincare product I got sucked into. Uh, this is the new Tatcha Silk Canvas. This is a filter finish primer. So I've tried this twice and I just don't know how I feel about it. It comes in this little jar and you kind of scoop it out, which first of all, I don't love that just because I have nails and things can get really kind of annoying. But one thing I noticed is I feel like it did smooth. It's quite thick and you only need a little bit, but I put it around my T-zone when I did try it. But I felt like after a few hours, it started looking pretty cakey on my pores. So like my pores looked good for a couple hours. And then I felt like they were kind of like, they looked like they were caked up. So I'm going to have to try this a little bit more and see if maybe it was just the foundation I was using. This is pricey as is any Tasha product. I think this was like $55. So this one I'm on the fence about, but I'm intrigued. I just don't know if it really does what it claims to do in terms of hiding my pores. And that's like the biggest thing I'm looking for. Speaking of pores, I found this new product that I'm so excited to try. 
This is from Peace Out, and this is called Peace Out Pores. Now, I think they have Peace Out Acne Dots, which I've purchased a couple times, which are little dots that you put on breakouts and then you sleep in them. This is so interesting to me. So when I saw this, they're basically like nose strips, and I thought like, oh, okay, this is their spin on, you know, Biore nose strips, but this is so different. So these are super unique because you apply them and leave them on for four to six hours. So a lot of the reviews were saying they slept in it. You don't have to, obviously, but if you have four hours kind of around the house, you're not doing much. And apparently when you peel them off, like tons of gunk and oil and like blackheads come out. These have amazing reviews so I was like yes I'm so excited I like this brand I think they're super cool super innovative and you get I think four blackhead strips for your nose and four pore strips for another part of your uh, body so I haven't used this yet I picked these up right around when I did get my uh, laser done on my face so I was trying to baby it I'm super excited to give these a try to see if they're a game changer and they kind of blow Biore strips out of the water so I also picked up this Guerlain a blurring active base this is a smoothing and blurring effect primer. Used it today for the first time and I really think my pores look really nice today. Now of course that could be foundation. I don't really know if it's this per se, but I really, really like this. I have high hopes. Uh, this is supposed to just be kind of like a benefit professional. I will say the texture is different. It is like a cream. When it comes out, it comes out white and it doesn't have that silicone-y feel but it did help blur my pores. So pricey, but I'm willing to pay if it'll make me look smoother. I feel like as I get older, I'm just having so much texture just right here and no amount of skincare. I mean, I have so much skincare. I think it just all comes down to genetics and I just have enlarged pores. My dad has rosacea. Thank you so much, dad, for giving that to me. But we all got to work with what we got, so if anything can mask it, I'm all about it. So I also picked up a repurchase of a foundation that I actually went through, and this is the Too Faced Born This Way foundation. I got the shade Natural Beige. Now, they did send me the original, and I actually went through it. This foundation I really like because it's a good medium coverage, and it's not as drying as most foundations that I use. So I typically like a matte foundation because I don't want to break out and a lot of times really dewy foundations will break me out all over my um, chin area and I also have an issue with it breaking up and sliding off. I don't have dry skin, I have combo, but I can still wear this and it's a little bit more moisturizing than most of the foundations that I own. So I just wanted something sort of like this or the uh, Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk. They kind of play the same for me in terms of being almost like a satin finish and being a little bit more moisturizing and being that we are still in the cold months. I feel like my skin is really dry. Also been doing like acne treatments, so I don't know if that could be it. But then I also picked up this Clinique Stay Matte Oil Free Makeup to go on the other side for my matte needs. And this is um, 09 Neutral, and I do like both of these. I've been using them and I've been enjoying them. This is like a good medium coverage. Same thing as this. This one's more neutral and it's like more long lasting, not as dewy or radiant this one's kind of in between so I do enjoy both of them and I just wanted to try some new foundations um, that were going to work for my needs so Stila came out with these new glitter and glow highlighters for the face I picked up the shade Monarch and I've worn it a couple times on Instagram and I can say this is a very unique product so here is a swatch of Monarch and what I can say is I don't see a huge difference in formula from the face highlighters to the eye highlighters. Well, I guess they're not highlighters, but the eye glitter and glows, they're very, very similar. Um, the way the textures and everything, both very glittery, which obviously it's called the glitter and glow, so I'm, you know, I wasn't surprised. I do like these, they don't disrupt my foundation. I think they're very pretty. I just apply it on the back of my hand and then use a brush and stipple it in. So I've used this a few times and I think it's really nice, but I just don't understand the difference. Like I feel like it's, basically the same formula as the eye formula, but it's maybe a little bit more sheer. So I can't say that I was like blown away. I think it's pretty and I like it, but I don't see myself buying a ton more. And it's just kind of one of those things, it's like, it's glittery. So it's kind of like the Cover FX glitter drops. It's like, you want to wear them sometimes, but it's not like an everyday thing. So I think a little bit underwhelmed with these. I don't know what I was expecting, but they were just okay. I'm not like blown away by them. Now something I do like from Stila, this is their Glitterati Lip Top Coat in the shade Embolden. I saw Tati talking about this, and I have one of the colored ones, but this is just like a neutral gold. 
These are super nice. They dry down very similar to the Lime Crime in terms of the way they apply wet, but then they dry down. So it's not like a Jouer lip topper where it's like glossy. This will dry down. So I just want to get a neutral one. She wore it in a video and I just thought it looked so beautiful. So I picked it up. This is a wearable, you know, kind of nude gold shade that I think anyone could wear. And it just adds a little bit of like a pout to the center of your lip. So I'm all about this. Sephora released a ton of new lipsticks lately and they were super affordable. I believe they were like $8 each and this packaging is like almost like that cardboard packaging. Reminds me of some of the Tarte packaging. I picked up two shades and I got Love Love and Somewhere in Spain. Here are the swatches and they swatch gorgeous. Like they literally slide right on. They look to be like a matte finish but not drying. I'm so excited to wear these. Love Love is right here. It's just like a grazy nude. And then the other one that I got was Somewhere in Spain and this is like a peachy warm nude. So I'm really into these. Eight bucks. I love that. I think there's so many different colors. You cannot go wrong. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to have these and I think the price point is amazing. I also picked up two of the matte Pat McGrath lipsticks. Don't ask me why. They are very, very pricey. I got like a light pinky peach shade and then more of like a, I don't know what I would call this, like a mauve shade, which typically isn't my speed, but I wanted to try it out. So this one is Omi and I think it's like a really big seller of hers because it's more of like that everyone loves those like kind of mauve I don't know what to even describe this as, like a mauve neutral. And then the other one that I got was Peep Show, which I love Peep Show. Peep Show is right up my alley in terms of color. So I can say when they swatch, they swatch so like effortlessly, like they just go on and it is really one swipe pigment. And you can definitely tell they're matte, they almost have a powdery feel. So they look really pretty, they feel comfortable on the lips. And I think the packaging is gorgeous. They're just very expensive. But I am glad to have a couple in my collection just to say that I have some Pat McGrath lippies. So the last thing I picked up from Sephora has quickly become a favorite of mine. And this is the Bare Minerals Gen Nude in the shade Yes. I'm obsessed with this color. It's just the perfect nude gloss in my opinion. These really are just like pigmented glosses. Very similar to the ABH glosses. Just that good pigment, high shine, gorgeous glosses. This is the perfect color for me. Just like that warm, beautiful, brownie nude. I used to really love like the pinky nudes and now I'm moving into the more neutral brown tan nudes. And I think this is stunning and they had a ton of colors. So if you're a gloss person, you will love these. Moving on to Ulta, this I did not think I was gonna get, but I ended up caving and picking it up. And this is the Dose of Colors Sassy Sienna's palette. I really am just so into peachy shades, as you can see from my eyes. Orange, peaches, really, really warm colors. And these are beautifully pigmented. I tried her shadows in the past and they were great quality. So I was kind of, I knew that the quality was gonna be great. The only thing is they're just so pricey. I wanna say this was like $30 or something like that. And that's what kind of holds me back is because, I mean, that's super pricey. I can get a big palette for $30. I do think they're beautiful. I don't know now, seeing all the new releases, if I should have picked it up just because I'm like, ooh, there's only five shades in here and there's so many palettes coming out with beautiful peachy tones. But nonetheless, you can't lose because they're beautiful, they blend beautifully, they're pigmented, and they're just good quality, so I am glad to have it in my collection. I just wish they could kind of lower that price a little bit. Also from Dose of Colors, I did grab three of their new glosses. Super stunning colors. Here are the swatches right here. So the first one that I have is Can You Not, which is a neutral nude, sort of similar to that Bare Minerals one I just showed. And then I have Honey, I'm Home, which is a really kind of peachy tan color very warm nude super pretty and then the last one I have is called goals and this is like a iridescent kind of gold these are amazing so before she had glosses they were kind of like gritty feeling on the lips the colors were pretty but they were gritty and she reformulated and I agree hundred percent these have no clumpiness no grittiness they're just smooth on the lips, very high shine. Again, very similar to the Anastasia Beverly Hills ones. There's a ton of different colors to choose from that are in the neutral family, but 
pinky or mauvey or tan or nude. So I think she did a great job with the colors as she always does and the packaging is gorgeous. So I'm here for these. And the last thing I picked up was this new highlighting palette from Flower Beauty. This is their Galactic Glow Holographic Palette. And I just got this in last night. The swatches look very powdery to me, but I feel like that's kind of similar with a lot of holographic. You have to really like warm them up on the skin and blend them out to get the kind of high shine that you're looking for. As I said, they feel a little bit powdery when you swatch, but I feel like once you buff them into the skin, they do take on that metallic look that you're looking for. And I think it is kind of a fun palette, but still very wearable. I mean, you do have kind of the rainbow shades or the holographic shades, but they're still wearable enough for every day. So I really think this is beautiful. I know Flower Beauty does really good highlighters. So I had to pick this up and I'm really just happy that they're in Ulta Beauty now because they have a lot of beautiful products. All right guys, so that's gonna do it for my Sephora and Ulta haul. As always, I will keep hauling stuff for you guys if you wanna see them here on my channel. Let me know down below what products spoke to you or what you've picked up recently. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.